Hey, welcome back. Yesterday I posted a video called the Stillness Gym's Tactical Play Day. Go check it out if you haven't already, if for no other reason than to see the bloopers at the end. But in response to that video, I got a question from someone that looked at the club ball movements I was doing and was left feeling like, hey, maybe that's not so good for you or your shoulders. And it's not the first time I've run into that problem. Uh, sometimes people will look at club bell movements and because there's such a disparity between them and the moves that you'll see in a regular gym, we'll be left with some confusion as to the potential benefits or even risks associated with those movements. This person's issue in particular was that they'd always heard that it's not really so good to bring your arms so high up when you're working with weights. For instance, in a lateral raise, you don't want to come up so high here because you might wear out your rotator cuff. To me, that sounds like it's coming from a bodybuilding type paradigm. And what I hope to do in this video is offer a comparison between that view of the body and a more holistic view of the body so that you can understand why the movements that I did in the Stillness Gym Tactical Play Day weren't as dangerous as they might seem. What I mean is that typically in bodybuilding, the body is viewed as a collection of parts or muscles that when properly stressed can be forced to increase in size and strength. This is known as hypertrophy. In order to accomplish this goal of hypertrophy, steps are taken to isolate the stress to a given muscle or group of muscles. So the focus of the movement is to isolate stress on the muscles. A more holistic view of the body might describe something like a single large bioelectric jelly bag of muscle and fascial tissue with hundreds of attachments and adhesions throughout the body. This tissue can still be enlarged and strengthened, but when viewed holistically, an understanding of functional anatomy enables us to see how these so-called parts actually work together to function within real-life tasks rather than how they supposedly function in isolation. In this situation, exercises have a different purpose. The focus of the stress on the muscles is to facilitate future movement. Back to bodybuilding. Let's look at a front raise. The exercise itself has a primary resistance vector, a straight line from the weight down to the earth as a result of gravity. The exercise has a primary muscle focus, the deltoid group. The exercise usually has a typical loading parameter a load that allows 8 to 12 reps for 3 to 5 sets. Here we're looking to focus a lot of stress into a small area. Because of this sort of loading and the frequency with which it might occur in bodybuilding programs, certain precautions have to be taken to avoid injury to the joints, such as limiting the exercise to a range of motion that is much smaller than what you would typically consider normal for a healthy joint. In this example, it means that even though you might normally be able to raise your arms above shoulder height very easily with no weight, you probably shouldn't if you're going to stress your body in this way. And now back to the clubs. In an exercise like a high club bell swing, we aren't isolating the deltoid group to do the work on their own. They're more like players on a huge team of muscle contracting and elastic tissue resisting deformation, all working towards the same movement goal. The resistance is not limited to the gravity vector. Instead of going straight down, the resistance pulls away from the hand that is trying to keep the club bell tied to the body. Instead of one vector, the resistance passes through an infinite number of lines as the club swings in its arc. Because the club is swung and not lifted, there's potential for a high degree of force production despite moving a relatively light weight. Because the stress is different, the effects on the body are different. As the club bell pulls away, the proper execution of the exercise forces the tissues to fight to keep the shoulder joint in proper position. This helps increase the health of and strengthen the tissues of the shoulder in such a way that it's easier to maintain that healthy position throughout the day, even when you aren't actively exercising. The fact that you're moving a relatively light weight means that the chance of acquiring an injury like you would if you did a heavy raise outside of a certain range of motion is considerably less. All right, that's it. Try to keep in mind that everything's got a context, okay? In this video, am I saying that the dumbbell front raise is a bad or unhealthy exercise? No. 
Am I saying that bodybuilding is bad or unhealthy? That's maybe a topic for another video. Uh, but what's important to take away from this is that I'm not saying that the clubbell swing is a better exercise than the dumbbell raise. Okay, they each have uh, their place. What I'm trying to get across in this video though is that in order to understand the value of a particular exercise, you've got to understand the values of the systems that they come from. That way, you can better understand how to apply those things so that you can achieve your personal goals. Before I wrap things up, I want to say thank you to Joshua H. Thanks for asking the question that inspired this video. For the rest of you out there in the stillness, if you've got any questions about anything that I covered today or like to see me cover in the future, go ahead and let me know by leaving a comment down below, or you can like me on Facebook and leave a comment there. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the video. We'll see you later.